And that was put down saying that there are only very specific files that you should be allowed to create in the C group file system. Uh, this was, for, for, for me, this, this felt like an uh, inflexibility argument. I understand for a particular distro or of, of some sort, this is a challenge where some user space utilities would not know these files in the standard file systems are coming from BPF and they would start, sort of start relying on them. But I wonder if it is if it should be allowed in a configurable way to extend these file interfaces with BPF. So maybe I want to create something in procfs, right? Uh, and I want to add a file there, and I should implement. I could implement the logic uh, or the content of the file with with BPF. Similarly, in C group fs. So does it? Does I, I know that Linux? I saw some background on the mailing uh, mailing list threads that there there has been like this has been shot down many times that people don't like it. But could it be under some advanced config or like uh, for some people for people who have who know what they're doing <laughs> sort of area? So you, so you know what you're doing. Uh, config options. Yeah, <laughs> probably like I. Like, like like RCU expert, BPF expert, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but what was, like, maybe how I can talk through, like, what was the problem with the overlay FS trying to combine, like, BPF FS and the group FS? Uh, so, what the KP talked about was the previous, the very first draft of version I come up to solve my problem and talk about this morning. The initial thought I had, the solution I gave was actually to use the BPF to extend the C group file system interface. Basically, you can pin a BPF object in the C group file system. When you pin that, you create an artificial file in the C group file system, and then you can read it and write it, and it was the same. But uh, this will be becoming very intrusive to the C group file system because it's actually adding files to the C group interfaces. And uh, that idea was not uh, uh, liked by the C group maintainers. So uh, after that, I kind of switched to the idea to uh, replicate a C group hierarchy in the BPL file system. So by replicating these hierarchies, you can um, create files in the BPL file, BPL file system and then read the file there. Um, some thoughts I have from the very first version of the RFC patch was that so there are pros and cons for, the first, for that solution by extending the file system. Uh, the pro is that uh, whenever the user creates a C group, they don't need to have a, uh, add the BPL programs to create those files because it's um, uh, it's already the SQL file system can create these files for you automatically. So it will be a lot of a simpler uh, for us not to have the troubles I have for the whole complicated infrastructure introduced this morning. Uh, the cons that, uh, that uh, will be intrusive to other file system. Uh, so that's the, some kind of background or discussion here. So, so I think there's, there's one, one more very big advantage there, right? We want, we want to have, we currently have C group v1, that is creating some files in, uh, in the C group file system. They're not taken, they're in C group v2. Uh, there are programs that expect those files to be present. So there is, there is code change required. There would be code change required. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's inconvenient, right? Like it's inflexible, which is something we should try to solve with BPF, which is what we tried in the beginning. Uh, but like, uh, this would this would make our the migration easier because the file would effectively be in the same place implemented by BPF. Uh, the contents of the file would be implemented by BPF. The other aspect is like in proc, right? I want to add my own custom statistics that would be in proc. Of course, the client library to get these statistics could be sort of you should just move towards BPF maps and and the work so how it was doing where you allow certain unprivileged code to read like BPF maps, but uh, of in the true Linux sense, we should probably have files in proc that could create like statistics generated by BPF programs. This were, this doesn't fly. People don't like other things adding random files in proc. So I remember initially I was talking to uh, Yong Hong told me that uh, when they introducing task eater, uh, they were also thinking about extending the proc file system uh, by able using BPF. 
So in that way, you can parameterize a task eater program and then uh, ping those uh, task eater program in the proc file system under each uh, uh, task directory. Uh, so that would be very convenient to use. Uh, but uh, they, they told me that there are some concerns there, so they didn't continue in that path. Uh, I'm trying to do a very much a similar thing, <laughs> uh, I mean, but eventually we choose uh, to do the currently we using this, uh, do it in the BPL file system. So mm -hmm. I definitely think that uh, being able to extend the, the, the pseudo file system interface uh, with the BPF uh, have some uses. A anything, any pseudo file system, like proc, C group, whatever, like I, but in, Yes, that was, oh, the, I think that question was not answered yes. yet. Yes. So sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad. The, 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 there are also proposals. Uh, I tried, uh, the solution is that uh, we have, uh, we use an overlay file system. We have uh, two layers of file system. Underneath is a SQL file system, and the top layer is a modifiable file system. Uh, maybe BPL file system, so you can ping the, you can have, you create a unified uh, view and which is a combination of the uh, SQL file system and the BPL file system. You can, uh, can, you can ping that. The issue here is that uh, because the underlying layers uh, is a SQL file system and uh, it uh, changes from time to time, uh, but uh, there is a requirement in the overlay file system is that the requires the underlying file system be immutable, uh, so if, if you change the underlying file system, you get uh, undefined uh, behaviors. I tried that. Uh, it does. Uh, it's very confusing. It causes uh, some issues from from the view of the uh, user space. For example, if you create a C group in the underneath directly from the underneath file system, and then you delete it, uh, the file is cached there, and uh, you you get an inconsistent view uh, from the a unified uh, file system view, so so it's uh, so that that doesn't work using I mean, overlay file system. So what we could do is telepathically relay this question to the file system uh, uh, summit there, right? Like, can we make overlay FS understand uh, base modifiable OS or uh, base modifiable file system? Sorry, uh, maybe we can ask them, right? This is something they would probably a use case they never considered, and it's possible, right? I don't know. I can I can ask a neighbors about it, but I. My intuition is that technically it be difficult to to avoid this assumption to to make it work without uh, uh, breaking our assumption. I, I haven't thought about it in this way. I can I can ask and then try. I, 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 I would defer to the experts there. <laughs> is that um, answer so, to that question? Just a question for understanding. Like when you have the lower and upper file system, right? Could also be. The lower one, BPF, and BPF is not modifiable except for from within the kernel, so it's like con more controlled. And the other mm. one is like the C group, which... No, the eventual file system should be the same type as the upper level, upper layer, because you are, you are pinning from the top level, and the top layer should be the same type as it should. It definitely has to be the BPL file system. It cannot be the C group file system. So on, on a principle standpoint, right? I mean, this is this is a Trojan horse sort of scenario. We're trying to create files. The files will appear on on something. Uh, uh, on a principle standpoint, is it, it would it be fine to add this functionality what in whatever way we can by if it is under config expert or. But who's who's the ultimate who's the ultimate uh, person who has to like? There's no ultimate like here. It's like it's it's a combination, right? It's a well, <laughs> Linux philosophy. I don't know. Like the proc files, like everything in proc should be like maintained by proc. Like C group maintains the C group. Like overlay, I think making overlay FS work uh, in this scenario where you don't have all mm -hmm. the rights coming through the upper file system, but lower, like in this case, like C group can be modified on its own. And the overlay FS doesn't do the caching, and like every time for every access, it like goes uh, through. Uh, I think it should be doable, and this is more of like 
flexible, then we can combine like VPF with FS yeah. with the group of S, or VPF with F with proc of S, and like, or any other like trace of S, debug of S, sys of S, like any other file system, as long as overlay of S doesn't maintain this caching layer and does not assume that all of the writes going through the through the top. I agree with you. And, and on, a, on a principle standpoint, that is the functionality overlay FS is supposed to provide. It is provide extension to like it's a... It was designed differently, so my understanding again. <laughs> okay. But maybe it will be not, it won't be even called overlay FS, but it's it's pseudo false system that combines two and potentially not being, being a master of either. Okay. Should be two, it will. So... Overlay, f oh, you have to mount overlay yeah. first. Like it cannot just appear. Prevent pro proper proc FS mounting. Like no, 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 you, no, you don't. No. You don't prevent. You no. like you have proc FS, put overlay FS with VPF FS, and it all will work in the same in spot. This, in the same slash proc. I, I know. I know. We use overlay FS in container optimized OS, where the base image is sort of like uh, read read only, and then there are. There are overlays that go on top of that, but that is the criteria, like how I was mentioning, that the base file system uh, that, that is being overlaid upon is 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 not changing, and whereas C group currently changes stuff. I'm just wondering how in practice is this, that, like, if I want to extend, be able to extend proc and pass, generally, not in, inside my uh, C group, but like overall yeah, yeah, yeah. system, right? Like, how do I do this? Like, do I overlay and pass in real time? Yeah, and then and then files appear there, right? Because you mounted it via overlay FS, the files would appear when you're doing like when you're interacting with the file system. This is my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? But my understanding is that the files appear as if it was normal proc FS. This is why I was going to the the principal argument, right? In principle, that's the end result. Files appear in proc FS uh, by using overlay FS. So you might have the same principled argument here. But But proc FS doesn't appear by its own, like somebody mounts, like yeah. systemd mounts proc FS. FS tab like or whatever there is, yeah. So like you, you, you need to adjust that part. If we would do, well, if we can remount, right? It's like. Yeah, but I think. I think we should just ask. You the should first. try hard in this direction, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, otherwise, like. If you extend one file system specifically, mm -hmm. it's just a hack on top of other hacks. So, I think there, there was in principle agreement on that the overlay FS approach is, is reasonable. It's, it was just the limitation of the overlay FS itself. So, uh, like, see, for example, going back to the C group FS, what how I think you tried to do is not only to pin to one uh, link, one iterator into C group FS. But also to make C group of us, when new C groups are created, you would transfer the old one and put in a new location. So that's becoming like very, very like BPF specific and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's what like Tejan didn't like mainly. Yeah. Like if it was just like let's just pin an iterator in C group of us and do something special, well, we can try to convince like him and his other C group folks. At least that would be okay, I think. But like automatically now, like oh, let's take it from here and pin it in another place. Preserve naming convention or not? Like it's just becoming like really, really yeah. custom and it's specific. Gonna and yeah, it's gonna be messy. Yeah, it's gonna be messy. So uh, also inheritance is also important uh, requirement for us. For example, if you have a C group, and then you pin into parent C group. If you create a child C group, the child C group should automatically be getting those. Uh, uh, pinned objects there, um, and uh, I can see that uh, pinning on on the SQL file system would be difficult to have this inheritance enforced. Mm -hmm. But if we add in the sleepable uh, hooks to C group creation, potentially there we can create direct create files in the C group of S. So that's a thing we can sell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when when the things like policy, this automatic stuff is not done by the kernel, but the C group code, when it's like just a hook there that can create an iterator and it will do something, then it's I think will be fine. Right, right. So just keep this in the back of the mind because it'll make stuff a lot of lot simpler uh, if the files do appear appear somehow in C group FS, right? Like uh, yeah. either via an overlay or something. 
I, I think it's just that the overlay file system is not intended to be used this way. So it has some special Evolution. uses. <laughs> we should, I, I, mean, I think we should check with the people there in the FS land. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think uh, this was good. That's all I had. Uh, so you, we asked for a small topic. <laughs> I was able Perfect. To Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, folks. <laughs>